Hey everyone! Last time, we discussed the main events throughout the Hyra arc. This video is my third installment in my Detective Conan in a Nutshell series, so if you haven't seen parts 1 and 2, I highly recommend watching those before this one. As I Hybra's introductory arc comes to a close, we enter the Vermouth arc, whose narrative becomes more streamlined using the substantial world building previously established as its basis. This is the first section of the show that truly feels compartmentalized into its own arc story, and it's a masterfully elaborate one at that. Spanning files 243 to 437 in the manga, there is much to dissect and unpack as these character stories unfold. Now, without further ado, let's pull back the curtain and let the show begin. On the night preceding Ron's school play rehearsal, both her and Conan take a quick trip to Professor Agasa's house to wash up, as their shower back home is broken. Conan privately mentions to Agasa how Ron's behavior has recently differed around him, by not talking to and treating him like an ordinary first grader. Hybera boldly suggests that Ron has seen through his identity. As she retreats to the basement, she is seen working with multiple floppy disks, one of them visibly damaged, presumably from the incident at the Haido City Hotel. While on a camping trip with Professor Agasa, the detective boys' curiosity quickly gets the best of them as they spot a group of bank robbers disposing of a corpse within a limestone cavern. In the midst of the panic, Conan is shot in the stomach and is later admitted to Baker General Hospital after the culprits were taken into custody. Due to his immense blood loss and the hospital's lack of available blood supply, Ron suggests donating her own to save his life. With undeniable confidence, she claims she has the same blood type as him. Both Conan and Hybra acknowledge this. And as the doctors begin their procedure, Ron anxiously sits in the waiting room, praying for Shinichi's recovery. With Conan thankfully pulling through, ten days later, Ron and Sonico are discussing their upcoming school festival and play while visiting him in the hospital. Sonico explains that Dr. Araide, who is also the school's doctor and substitute basketball coach, decided to help with the play's production by taking the male lead of the Black Cloak Knight. Conan exhibits jealousy since Ron and Dr. Araide both share a lead role and are scripted to exchange a kiss. Heiji then pays Conan a hospital visit, and shares his suspicions regarding Ron knowing his true identity. He suggests confessing the truth to her, and contemplates Shinichi's situation on the plane ride home. Conan, kept awake by these persistent thoughts, decides to hopelessly relinquish his identity to Ron, when Hybera sneaks into his hospital room and holds a pistol to his forehead. Proving to be a fake weapon, she proposes an ultimatum in order for him to evade this risky situation. Flash forward to the school festival's play. The Black Cloak Knight makes his entrance and longingly embraces Ron in his arms. In the audience, a man resembling Shinichi takes a seat next to a confused Conan. As Ron and the Knight are about to kiss, a blood-curdling scream is heard from the audience as a man collapses to the floor. Inspector Megare is called to investigate, and the man who sat next to Conan does some investigating of his own. As questions pertaining to this boy's identity arise, he reveals himself to be Shinichi Kudo. Utter disbelief fills the room, until Kazuha exposes the imposter, who is actually Heiji with makeup caked on his face. As the inspector deems the death a suicide, the Black Cloak Knight states otherwise, and makes a breathtaking appearance by removing his helmet, revealing himself as the true Shinichi Kudo. Shinichi solves the murder mystery, while Heiji and Ron are dumbfounded since Conan and Shinichi are present in the same room. Tailing the case's resolution, Shinichi collapses to the ground in pain. His body is suffering the excruciating transformative effects from an APTX4869 antidote Hyber created and supplied him with while in the hospital. As he now awaits his imminent return to the body of a child, he fades out of consciousness, desperately clinging onto a normal body. Miraculously, he wakes up retaining his teenage body, and begins to think he's turned back for good. While getting ready for school, Conan, who is revealed to be Hybra in disguise, warns him not to get too comfortable. Disregarding her advice, Shinichi asks Ron out on a date to a fancy restaurant on the top floor of the Baker Central building, the same restaurant Shinichi's father proposed to his mother years prior. While there, a company president is shot in the head, and Shinichi solves the mystery behind the murder. As the case wraps up, he darts away to the bathroom as he begins to fall ill due to the waning effects of the antidote. Hybera stands in the stall behind him, and leaves Conan Edegawa's attire on the floor, Shinichi finally reverting to Conan. Conan runs back to a patiently waiting Ron, and utters, Wait for me, the final words Shinichi wanted to relay. 
Sonico mentions how Dr. Araide finished his work as a substitute basketball coach, and was pressured into becoming a member of the drama club due to his recent surge in popularity. Ron comments that their new English teacher, Jody Santamillion, is an equally hot topic within the school right now. Speaking of the devil, Ron, Sonico, and Conan bump into Jody at an arcade, and unfortunately encounter a murder. Conan begins to crack the case, and Jody seems to take note of his intelligence. After the murder's resolution, and after the kids part way from Jody, she mutters to herself, bye bye, cool guy, and walks away. While on the phone in her apartment, she states one of her targets has fallen into her grasp, and that they've changed their appearance and are attending a school. She proceeds to name the aforementioned target as Rotten Apple. At a nightclub, Gin and Vodka finish up with a client when Vermouth displays her disguising prowess by approaching the table as a waiter. Jin sees through her getup, and asks if she's found what she was looking for. Cryptic as always, she says she hasn't found the one, and as Vodka points out her inherent vagueness, she replies with, A secret makes a woman, woman. On their way to a skiing trip, Professor Agasa and the detective boys are caught in a bus hijacking incident along with Dr. Araida and Jody. Hybra, who is shaken to her core as she believes Vermouth has boarded the bus, switches seats with Conan and hides within her seat. From the two people who hijack the bus, Conan believes one of the three mysterious passengers in the back is an additional accomplice. As one of the bus jackers points a gun at Conan's head, Dr. Araida leaps into action to defend him, saying a mere curious child shouldn't be killed. As Dr. Araide and one of the potential accomplices are called to the front as per the hijacker's request, Conan subtly asks Jody for her lipstick, having a plan up his sleeve. The narrative then switches to third person, as Vermouth asks herself, where can lipstick bring us? And encourages Cool Guy to show his magic. Conan outsmarts the hijackers and identifies the third accomplice. As the bus comes to a screeching halt, Jody swiftly takes down one of the hijackers, demonstrating her combative abilities, contradicting the front she presents. She says the term, a secret makes a woman woman, in response to the man she just took down, furiously asking who she is. With the bus slated to blow up in 30 seconds, everyone evacuates except for Hybra, who stays behind with the intention of killing herself to break the only tie Conan and everyone has to the organization. Conan grabs Hybra's arm and busts through the windshield, escaping the explosion by seconds. As the case concludes, one of the passengers from the back of the bus is seen speaking into a recorder, saying their target didn't appear, and that he'll continue investigating at a later date. This man is known as Shuichi Akai. Speaking of Shuichi Akai, Ron incidentally sees him in passing at an arranged marriage hall, yet can't quite remember where she has seen him from. Ron, Sonoko, Conan, and Dr. Araide are at this marriage hall eavesdropping on the dramatic and undesired omiai between officers Miwako Sato and Ninzaburo Shiratori. To Officer Takagi's relief, the arrangement falls through, and Sato acknowledges the romantic feelings she has towards Takagi. After viewing a circus show with Professor Agasa, the detective boys run into a foreigner named James Black. He's unfortunately mixed up with a kidnapping, and Conan and the kids take it upon themselves to save him. In passing, Shuichi drives his truck past them, and Hybra makes a notable reaction to his presence. With the available clues James left, the kids manage to find him, and the kidnappers are arrested. James is then seen after the incident having a conversation with Shuichi in Shuichi's truck. In the midst of another case, Takagi informs Conan that all of Koguro's Tokyo-based case files were stolen on the day of the bus jacking, and have since been returned. Shuichi Akai is the suspect that comes to mind, as Conan contemplates whether or not Koguro himself is the target of the theft. Later that night, Shuichi watches the detective agency from across the street. Ron cannot seem to shake the thought of Shuichi, as his presence evokes a vague sense of familiarity. Lost in thought one day in class, Jody snaps her out of it by inquiring about the mysterious X symbol on the board. To her embarrassment, Ron fails to give a satisfactory answer, and Jody encourages her to think about it for the next class. After school, Ron, Sonoko, Conan, and Jody meet at a mall cafe, where Jody has a query about any suspicious harassers in the area. Their conversation is interrupted when a blackout causes sudden panic throughout the mall. Conan discovers the victim of a stabbing, and an investigation begins. Jody, again, demonstrates a semblance of intellect by subtly nudging Conan or Cool Kid in the right direction by referencing American staples such as the Pentagon, the White House, the Oval Office, and the FBI. With Jody's insightful hints, Conan solves the mystery behind the stabbing, and the case is closed. 
Ron's persistent efforts to deduce the meaning of X lead her to sending an email to Shinichi, with XXX as the closer. Not before wishing them a safe farewell, Jody parts ways with her students, and with a quick glance back, she asks herself if it is almost time to pick the apple. In a dark apartment, Vermouth composes a message addressed to Jin, closed with XXX. She is the one to reveal the meaning of X as both a kiss and a sign of hatred. With her target on lock, she viciously throws a dart across the room, striking a dartboard with Sherry's image plastered over the bullseye. An X marks the spot on her face, and below her are images of Ron and Conan, with the words Angel and Cool Guy respectively written on their photographs. Conan and Heiji rack their brains to find a motive for the recent theft and return of Kogoro's case files. The two theorize that rather than the intended target being Kogoro himself, they entertain the possibility that Shinichi is being investigated, since he disappeared from the public eye right before Kogoro began landing successful jobs as a detective. As Conan recollects the hotel incident, logic tells that Pisco wasn't without an accomplice, and Chris Vineyard is the prime suspect. Wary about the American actress's affiliations, he requests the professor to dig for information on her by giving him a web address to a forum dedicated to her by fans. Heiji questions if there are any foreign individuals related to Conan. Agasa mentions the existence of Jody, and while jumping the gun, Heiji makes the executive decision to visit her apartment to investigate. Upon their arrival, Jody keeps Heiji and Conan waiting outside a long while, before apologetically inviting them in, hair wet as if she came from a bath. As she dresses in the other room, Heiji and Conan take the opportunity to snoop around her bathroom. In search of somewhere to grab a bite, it takes a mere step out the front of the apartment complex for the trio to witness a man fall to his death from a high floor. They investigate, and Jody keenly observes Heiji's skills as a high school detective, leading her to inconspicuously sneak pictures of him and Conan throughout the night. But Jody's actions don't go unnoticed. She is privately confronted by Heiji, who addresses her seemingly fake innocent foreigner act. Caught off guard by this unexpected accusation, she finds her camera film has gone missing, as Heiji makes a dignified leave. Heiji believes Chris Vineyard and Jody are not one and the same, regardless of Jody's suspicious intent. With doubt and trepidation, Conan toys with the validity of Jody's guise, and acknowledges two other suspicious characters looming amongst them. It seems clear to Jody that Heiji Hattori closely bears the deductive ability of Shinichi Kudo, referring to both as private eyes. As she opens her bathroom's medicine cabinet, Various pictures are seen, including one of Shinichi and Heiji at the school festival's play, alongside photos of Conan and Ron, with Cool Guy and Angel written on their respective photographs. After watching a soccer game with the professor and the detective boys, Conan decides to touch base with the professor about the info on Chris Vineyard's web forum. Agasa says the first time Chris Vineyard was seen in the public eye was during her mother, Sharon Vineyard's, funeral one year ago. With greedy reporters asking distasteful questions about her private life, she replies with, A secret makes a woman, woman, with a smile on her face. Caught on one of the cameras, yet with their identity unknown, a famous Japanese actress is seen amongst the funeral attendants. With no tangible evidence to link Chris Vineyard to the men in black, Conan knows he'll be up against a dangerous foe if his suspicions are correct. With the single word, God, triggering flashbacks of Sharon Vineyard, Shuichi Akai, and Shinichi to resonate within a feverishly delusional Ron, she collapses and dreams of the important yet traumatic experiences she had in New York City over a year ago. While waiting outside the Phantom Theater to watch the musical The Golden Apple, Shinichi, his mom Yukiko, and Ron run into the famous actress Sharon Vineyard. Ron gleefully thanks God for the opportunity to meet such a famous figure. As Sharon appears visibly disgusted by the mention of God, she asks if such an entity really exists, as no angel has ever smiled upon her. Since Sharon and Yukiko are great friends, due to both of them learning disguising techniques from Kaito Kid's magician father, Sharon allows Yukiko and the kids to enter backstage to meet the cast before the show. Walking around backstage, a suit of armor falls and nearly kills one of the actresses, but is saved due to Ron's instinctive actions. Sharon gives Ron her handkerchief as a thank you, and bids Yukiko and everyone farewell. While the musical is underway, one of the leads is shot and killed mid-performance. With the help of Shinichi, the investigators wrap up the case and arrest the perpetrator, who was the actress Ron saved earlier. With an off-kilter attitude, she calls Ron a sweet angel, and thanks her for helping her carry out the murder. As they exit the theater, 
Yukiko warns Shinichi and Ron of a Japanese serial killer with long hair, and urges them to check into a hotel while she goes to the police station for questioning. Mid-taxi ride, Sharon's handkerchief is swept out of Ron's hands by the wind, so they stop to find it. Shinichi spots it caught on the fire escape of an abandoned building, so he tells Ron to wait in the taxi as he fetches it. Caught up with her emotions about Sharon's words, and the recent actions of the murderer she saved, Ron barely has enough time to react when a large man with long hair suddenly approaches her in the alleyway. Ron is paralyzed by fear, unable to move. The man approaches closer and asks if she's seen a suspicious Japanese man with long silver hair. Replying with a timid no, he demands her to leave immediately, as the serial killer is still roaming the streets. She then runs into the abandoned building with hopes of finding Shinichi. While climbing the stairs on the fire escape, a wounded man fitting the description of the serial killer appears before her. The killer tells Ron to blame God for getting her into this situation, as he readies his gun to silence her. The rusty railing the killer was leaning on suddenly breaks, and he begins to fall to his death as Ron jumps into action by grabbing him. Shinichi helps in pulling him up. Asking why they would save a killer, Shinichi responds with, A reason isn't necessary while helping someone who needs it. Sharon and Yukiko are on the phone the following morning, where Sharon tells Yukiko to relay a message to Ron, saying that angels do indeed exist. Ron's fever finally breaks, and she wakes up in the hospital, realizing it was that case in New York where she began developing feelings for Shinichi romantically. Additionally, that long-haired man she encountered in the alleyway was actually Shuichi Akai, and after some deep thought, she recalls that he is a member of the FBI.